Travis Taylor. I'm a rocket scientist in the space and defense industry here in my hometown of Huntsville, Alabama, where the American space program started. Sometimes big science moves too slow for me, so come the weekend, I set out to solve important problems with my own team of backwoods geniuses. It's going, it's going, it's going! When we finally got that thing submerging, uh, that Michael and I were just so excited, we realized, man, we're really doing this. We were driving around under there about 10 to 15 feet deep. It was really cool that we could actually be this deep and look around and, and, and control this boat that we built. Now, we're all amped up about this enormous dish and what signals from space we might pick up. But we only have one day left to build a brand new radio telescope before the weekend's over. So the pressure is on for tomorrow. I was talking to my family uh, about doing this show. The idea was we want to get a next generation of folks interested in doing science and math again. We want to get the kids back into doing it, thinking it's cool, and seeing that it is cool, and so we can have that next generation of people like Neil Armstrong. You know, the term redneck means a lot of different things to a lot of different people, and they're not always nice, but yet, yet you embrace it on your ship. Yeah, absolutely, and, and a lot of people don't realize the true origin of the word, and we've looked up several different origins of the thing, but the, the real true one is that the southern sharecroppers, the farmers, they had everything that uh, they could have on their farm. If something went wrong, they had to fix it with only the things they had because it was a long way from going to town or something, right? And so they were hardworking, family-centric folks. So one of, the, one of the things you've built here, some of the ingenuity you've used, is, is to help create a moonshine-powered <laughs> rocket. Let, let's look at this. We're pouring moonshine into the rocket's fuel tank. Careful, careful, careful. And then very carefully we insert that fuel tank into the rocket, which by the way is loaded with explosives. It's going, it's going, it's going! And my first reaction was, this is a waste of some good moonshine. But second, uh, <laughs> the question is, you know, how do you come up with these ideas? Well, a lot of people don't realize it, but the first American in space, Alan Shepard, he went into space on moonshine. <laughs> I bet you didn't know that, did you? No. It, it, was, it was about 80% uh, moonshine what? and 20% uh, water. You're being serious right I'm, now. I'm dead you serious. have this deadpan delivery that I don't know if you're being serious or not. <laughs> explain, explain what you mean there. Well, alcohol is a really good rocket fuel when you mix it with liquid oxygen or, or nitrous oxide and it makes a very good rocket motor. So that's what they used for the first rocket that put uh, uh, Alan Shepard in space. Listen, I gotta tell you, I'm a believer. I sat last night and watched this with my 14-year-old and we just kept on watching and watching and watching and he was learning in the process. So congratulations, I think this is remarkable. Have you ever had any close calls? Uh, well, we did build a submarine out of a fertilizer tank that uh, <laughs> at, at, at about... <laughs> How could, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> my dad wasn't real happy when, when me and my nephew got in there and, and we, went, uh, we went underwater. We hit about 16 feet and that turns out to be the crush depth of some of the pieces we were using. And so we, we sunk the thing, uh, we sunk it like twice in 30 seconds. <laughs> it, was, it was a little scary, but we were fine. We got All right. out. Uh, Dr. Travis Taylor, you have to come back and teach us science because I have a feeling oh it would gosh, be the most fun science yes. class in the history. The whole idea uh, for this suit came to me when uh, I met some soldiers who had had their legs blown off uh, with, uh, with IEDs in Afghanistan and Iraq. We, we tested it, we've shot it, we've blown it up, and now uh, this marathon is a mobility test. If I can do... Uh, 26.2 uh, miles in this thing, uh, you know, Marines ought to be able to wear the things in combat. What is your education? You guys have a pretty impressive background. That's good, Pete. I have a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering, a master's in physics, a master's in mechanical and aerospace engineering, a master's in astronomy, a PhD in optical science engineering, and uh, I'm, I'm all but uh, finishing up the dissertation on another PhD in aerospace engineering. Wow, okay, very impressive. Now, what, so, so what do you do for a living? You've only had the TV show for three weeks. What were you doing before that? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, uh, both of us worked on projects for, you know, various military uh, organizations, NASA, you, you name it. It's all been aerospace defense kinds of things. Yeah. We got a science demo we're going to do for you. All right. You know, Two we had uh, uh, an bring, idea to uh, bring this bat. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. You always need a baseball bat when you're doing backyard bat. science. Right. Right. Louisville Slugger. <laughs> we had an idea to protect our military trucks from improvised explosive devices using beer cans and Pete's favorite ingredient. Spray foam. Spray foam. All right. Spray foam. Now, where's Raj? Bring Raj, out Raj. Raj. Raj, come on out here. So we decided to demonstrate this with a beer can Iron Man suit. Yeah. Now what? And now let's... I get the redneck part. 
tell me the science part. Yeah, what a lot of people don't realize is uh, there's actually a lot of thought that goes into this. These cans are empty, and we put the spray foam, on, spray foam on there, we stick it on there, and when the spray foam hardens, it, puts, it outgasses a gas in these cans, and they're pressurized. Right. Okay. So they act like a cylinder. When you hit them, they're a lot harder than if they were just plain old empty. Oh, so now when you hit it, it'll crush and try to push that gas out. Okay. So why don't you, you're uh, left-handed, right? Yeah. yeah so why, you, oh, let me get up. Put it back out. What? Smack <laughs> it. Stay, Smack stay it. Third. There you go. Stay with it, Jay. Stay with it. Get it again. There we go. Wow. Yeah. We need to get uh, my daddy and my nephew, Michael, to bring out some rockets that we made okay. for you. We got rockets. All right, yeah. let's bring that out. Hi, Dad. Hello there, Daddy. Now, right what's the there? science? This isn't Mentos and Coke, is it? What no, we it's absolutely oh, not. It's oh. moonshine and nitrous oxide. Moonshine and nitrous oxide. Right. Yeah, you might want to put those yeah, on. Yeah, okay, here we go. Yeah. Th these are your garden yeah, variety bottle rockets here. Put them on rods, get daddy some. You got so, CO2 cartridges? What? No, no, no. This, and we'll explain later, these are uh, actually nitrous oxides. This oh, is NOS, okay. like you guys would use oh, for, oh, you sure, know, souping yeah. up your cars. Sure, sure, yeah. yeah. And they use it in uh, these, uh, it's a standard oh, I got kitchen the ears, American, whipped cream. The first American that went into space, Alan Shepard, rode into space on alcohol. A lot of people okay. don't realize that. Yeah. So we're kind of following the same premise. We got moonshine, which is pure grain alcohol okay. right here. And this is our rocket made out of two soda bottles. So we're pouring in the fuel. It's amazing what a good education can get you. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's amazing, hey, man. This then, never gets old. Yeah, no, no matter how many no, times no. we've done this, we really enjoy it. So, so let me so see Dad if we lined up. Dad went to the moon and you're shooting beer cans. Okay. We're shooting the moon? Okay, go ahead over there. All right. Uh oh, uh oh. Wow, that is that powerful. Was mental telepathy right there. All right, so now I'm going to so vaporize this. Okay, so you're vaporizing it. All right. Then Pete's going to add the nitrous, and Jay, I wouldn't stand right there. Yeah, so what are we learning? You need to stand right here. Let me here get on the other side so people can see. Yeah. Now, yeah. is that sealed now, or you just... Okay. It's got a rocket oh, nozzle okay. on the back of okay. it. He's putting the nitrous in there. Well, stay with it, Pete. And okay. then I'm going right. to ignite it. This okay, could be loud, folks. Fire and hole! <laughs> yeah! Woo! Yeah! Check it out. That's how it works for me. <laughs> Jay! Woo! Yeah! Woo! Yeah! Woo! Yeah! Pass it out! Pass it out! with Tim Allen, the Rocket City Rednecks, and Jesse Balin. Let's go. Ready? Yep. Okay. I'm going to... Rocket City Rednecks right here. Great demo. How'd you guys feel about it? Oh, man, it was a blast. It just kept going around and around at the end. Jay didn't want to stop. I had to turn the brakes on. Him. Did he get dizzy or are you okay? No, I'm fine, man. It was great. All I was right. waiting for one of them to puke. You know? <laughs> Thank you so much for making science yeah, fun man. for us. Awesome. Yeah, man. Awesome. Yeah, Rocket City Rednecks. Yeah. Hey, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Your brain is a quantum computer. If that's the case, then every thought that you have is working through the laws of quantum physics. And it turns out the way quantum physics works is uh, you can take events that are coupled uh, with each other. An event that happens here, an event that happens there, whatever. They were somehow ever quantum coupled, they interact with each other instantaneously across the universe no matter what distance. Einstein hated this, but we've recently proved that that's the case. So think about that. If you have a thought, it's, uh, your brain is setting up some quantum wave function that is interacting with the entire universe all at once. That's kind of heavy, if you ask me. Uh, so is this thing going to work again now? All right. And so here's how it works. Uh, quantum computers don't work like regular computers. Regular computers do a dictionary search to find the answer to a problem. Okay, they go through all the possibilities to give you the answer. Quantum computer doesn't. A quantum computer says, what's the question? So in this case, your eyes see something. And, and it sets up, here's what I see in a wave function. And then it compares that quantum wave function to all the other quantum wave functions in the database, your brain. And instantaneously in quantum physics, like things stay, unlike things go away. So boom, all the things that are not what you just saw disappeared. And the thing that is appears in your mind and you realize, oh, I just saw a, a pretty cool race car. And uh, so that's how a quantum computer works. And that's how our brains work. And I'll show you that right now. Who sees a triangle? And who sees a square or a rectangle? I may not drew a perfect square. Anybody see it? Anybody see it? No, you don't. It's not there. All a bunch of there's a bunch of red Pac-Men. What happened? And you saw it instantaneously when you saw it, didn't you? 
Yeah, you did, because your brain just did a quantum reduction. We call it orchestrated objective reduction. And what just happened is your brain said, boom, this is what's in my eyes, okay? I've got to compare it to all my database. And it goes and, and instantaneously compared to everything in your database using the laws of quantum physics. And what came out of it was a triangle in red Pac-Man and a rectangle in red Pac-Man. Well, because there is, that's what it closely correlated to. It's not exact because quantum physics is you compare this ripple with that ripple and the ripples that are closest together is what you see or experience as reality. That's, this is a simple test to show that your brain doesn't use neural networks. And so what we are is we're floating around in this quantum sea of the universe where everything in the universe is this, in this, once was this little bitty teeny tiny quantum wave functions. Now it's a big one from the inside out anyway. And we're connected to it with everything we do, with every thought we have. Everything we think is going out there into the universe. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. All right? Well, so control your thoughts. That's what it's telling you. Control your thoughts. Because what you're thinking is interacting with the entire universe the instant you think it. Wow. That's, that's even more crazy. It makes me want to put a tenfold hat on my head or something. So, uh, so let me tell you. Setting up your thoughts are, is pretty important to set your thoughts up with visualization, with pictures. Because think about sending an email. If you just send text, not a lot of data. If you send, uh, you know, a little, a little picture, it's more data. If you send some audio, it's more data. If you send a video, it's more data. So the bigger you can make your thoughts, the more interaction it's going to have with the universe. So think about if you want to create a change and effect a change in the universe, then you need to visualize and think about the really big things and focus on it being big things. I did this with my daughter uh, about a few years back. We, my daughter came to me and said, Dad, I want a swimming pool. I said, well, get a job. <laughs> she was like four. <laughs> and, uh, and so I said, well, okay, get a, draw a picture of it and think about uh, having a swimming pool. She actually took me serious on that, and she drew out a picture of a swimming pool on a piece of construction paper, and she looked at it, and every night when I tell her a story, she'd say, Dad, I'm thinking about swimming in that swimming pool. And uh, it's really weird that November, when the royalty checks come in, I got more money than usual. And my wife and I said, hey, we could have a pool. And so my daughter's convinced this works. <laughs> so uh, one more thing with uh, another focus. We decided, to I decided I was going to build an Iron Man suit. Didn't know how, didn't know who was going to pay for it. I mad managed to get some folks wanting me to do it on TV. And I showed them this picture. Well... Well, this thing, I stayed with it, started looking a little bit like that, stayed with it, looks a little more like that, and then I stayed with it till it finally ended up like that, and it was fully bulletproof from head to toe. I could curl a beer keg, a full beer keg with one arm. I mean, what do you need an Iron Man suit for if you can't curl a beer keg with it? I mean, there you go. Well, all right, so uh, then, you know, if you're working on it really, really hard, and you think it's really, really hard work, it really ain't, uh, it's not work if it's worth it, right? And, uh, and, and when things go wrong, don't worry about it. Stuff will blow up on you. Stay with it. Keep moving forward. And you know what? You might get somewhere a lot further than you would think you would. And uh, so finally, leave you some thoughts that I like to live by. Uh, what, are, what, are you, what are you sending to the universe right now with your quantum computer up here, right? Well, first... Remember, the universe doesn't care if you try to do something because you really only did it or you didn't. There is no try. There's only do or do not. So don't tell me you're going to go try something. I don't want to hear it. Go do it. Go do it. Right? And uh, remember, you create everything you do as you go along. Winston Churchill had it. You know, Einstein had it. And uh, the thing, one of the really things I like to remember is nobody's out to get me. It was a really cool Guns N' Roses song. But I like to think that the universe is conspiring for me. Right? The universe is conspiring for me. So y'all keep that in mind. And, uh, hey, watch Rocket City Rednecks on National Geographic Channel. We're going to blow stuff up and hopefully not kill ourselves. And I uh, uh, hope y'all enjoyed it. Thanks a lot.